Didn't I tell you to sit y'all's asses down on the couch? <laughs> how you how you not wow. know that, man? I did not. It's been a long time since I've seen Roots. Okay, so it's been a long time. Tell, I'm Isn't all, that movie like four hours on, or something? Hold on, like we gotta get context. Butterfly okay. in the sky. Mm -hmm. Hit it, hit it. I can go twice, twice as high. high. Let's take, take a, a look. look. It's in a book. It's reading Rainbow. I got the part. I got the Ooh. I. <laughs> hold on. No, you don't. Hold no, you do not. I can do anything but sing. <laughs> Place mm. to go. I sing the whole reading oh, Rainbow. Yeah, yeah. Did you say ho? I, 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 I don't know the words. I just, you know, I just go yeah. like, mm -hmm. Hey, for real. All jokes aside, I, I, I'm gonna say what my mom used to say to me: "Tell the truth that God love." Have you really seen Roots? I have a long time ago. Long. Okay, time what, ago. What, what is it about? It's about slavery. Who it's wrote about, it? Who wrote it? I don't know who wrote it. Alex Haley. Alex Haley. Yes. And, and why are we talking about this right now? We're talking about it because I didn't know that the guy, the host for reading, say the guy's involved. name. No, I cannot own it. No, Lavar Burton. Lavar Burton. As a black man, you should know who LeVar Burton is. Listen, man, there's generations when as, it comes as, to this. Also, as a black man, you should not use a public platform to demean another black ooh, man. Ooh, preach. Hey, you could have done mm, this. You could have put him aside after the record was over and been like, bro. You could have lifted let, me up. Like, let me, I was like, when, you, when, did you, mm -hmm. when did you switch on me? Are you <laughs> we you could have lifted me up. Uh, I'm saying. <laughs> the yeah. camera's you turned made, on. You, you, you made a decision. turned on me fast. You, chose, you made a conscious decision. Uh, yep, you chose black on black violence. Right I was the type of guy, you rob a bank with him and he get caught. He gonna be like, O'Neal, come on out the bush. They got us, man. They mm -hmm. got us, man. Oh, Neil, you the type of dude that couldn't rob a bank in that jacket because you couldn't shoot the gun because it's just too tight. <laughs> Bro, why did you choose to wear this? I'm surprised you're ragging on the jacket. I like the jacket. It's the pants, though. No, see, the jacket. about the pants are flying. The pants. No, the, pa the pants they look like, fly to me. No, they look like culinary pants. Look like you're about to go. What are you talking about? cook. These are army pants. Those are army and pants. And I got the Birkenstocks, the black What military? No, you got them Jedediah threes on. This is man. Oh, you know what? Mm. I honestly am Yo, confused. Why do you have your gal's jacket on is the question. What you Ooh. mean? These, the, the, these are, this is the, her the, jacket. The, 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 this is her jacket. It is, bit, is it? It is a bit small. What you mean? It, how you can tell? You can, I'm not even standing up. How you know small? The sleeves. The sleeve, and it's like the bottom of the jacket is right underneath yeah, your nipples. Yeah, it, it literally looks like you're. <laughs> but ain't nobody wearing long jackets. Everybody wear crop. We said the bottom looks, of the jacket. It looks, like a, it looks like it's cropped. <laughs> it, it, it was kind of, that's, why, that's how I want it. That's hey, stop. I'm a, the, the funny thing is, y'all cracking jokes and y'all laughing, but in the 80s, they dressed like this. Well, guess what? It is not. <laughs> but but stuff come back around. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Three black guys on a couch where. Three black guys give you their opinions on just about everything. I'm O'Neal. I'm Renee. Alzo Slade Jr. Ooh. My name is O'Neal Cespedes. Christopher Cespedes. Christopher, not Christopher. Well, did you feel the need to give your entire name because you felt the confidence and conviction in which I did it? No, I just did it because you, know, you just happened to do it before me. I felt threatened. Threatened. But you already introduced yourself. I, I can't. Is, is there a rule that says I can't That's introduce myself twice? He, he likes to like, you got to. He's the one upper. Yeah, you know? but that wasn't even in the one up. Mm -hmm. That was just side by side. No, I just wanted to do it because I felt, I mean, there's not a rule that says I can't reintroduce myself, is there? I didn't know that. No, 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 no. But I'm saying was the impetus for your reintroduction no, just, me introducing myself not at all. my full name. Not at all. The, the no lie. Okay, let's be honest. Okay. <laughs> were, you not, were you not inspired to introduce to reintroduce yourself with your full name because I introduced myself with my full name? Let me think in about it. In the least bit. Let me think about that. Nah, the feeling just overtook me. Like, reintroduce yourself. <laughs> He's a lie, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He's a lie, If I just said Alzo, we would have been on to the next subject. That's not true. I was going to do it after I said I was like, man, let me reintroduce myself. Has, has, he, ever done He's gonna, has he ever done it since you've been on this couch? No. Mm -mm. Listen, no. Mm -mm. Okay, I don't say I'm next, to, jumping, I'm next to a painter. I'm next to a cook. Whoa. Whoa. See, whoa. That's, whoa. What you get. Whoa, whoa. that's what you get. No, see, that's what you get. You went in or you just yeah. after that. But ain't I'm nobody say nothing about these used deacon pants you got on. <laughs> used <laughs> deacon pants. <laughs> now it's time for the offering looking at they're, they're, they're dickies, not deacons. <laughs> Thank you very much. That's what you get, man. He ain't, he ain't loyal to nobody, bro. You should know that. He ain't loyal to nobody. You like a mercenary, bro. Mm -hmm. You like a cultural mercenary. Anybody can get it. Anybody can get Anybody. it. Anybody. You know mm hmm. Hey, um, listen, I want to be honest about something because I know Alzo is going to bring it up and he's going to talk about it. So I just want to go right into it. I want to deal with it. And then after I deal with it, I don't want to talk about it no more because I want to be cooked. So I was supposed to go to Japan. Um, 
you know, a little over 10 days ago. And uh, I'm, I'm from Jamaica. I'm a Jamaican citizen. And so I had to go through a lot of hoops to get my passport, you know, jump through a lot of hoops, a lot. I mean, a lot of hoops, something that was uncharacteristic. And by the grace of God, I got my passport. So I thought I was all good. So I'm at Air Japan and I'm about to, you know, check my bags and do all that. And then the woman was like to my boy, you can go. You can't go. You need a visa. So I was like, what are you talking about? You know, my green card? You want to show me a green card? That? She's like, no, you need a visa. So I said, what, what do you mean? And my boy was like, you got to call the consulate. You have to call the Japanese consulate in LA. So I called the Japanese consulate in LA. And I was like, what can I do? I'm about to hop on a flight to go to Japan. You know, I, we got there early. It was like three and a half hours early. So I'm like, Yo, okay, what can we do? That yada, yada, woo, woo. He's like, bro, you up against an immovable wall. You're not going to Japan, right? <clears throat> and um, I was looking forward to it. You know, I was gonna do some shopping, do some jujitsu, you know, be in Shibuya or Shibuya, however you pronounce it. I don't know, cause I didn't get to go. So I never learned the correct pronunciation. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to hold it though. <laughs> I, wanna, I, I know a lot of y'all. I know a lot of y'all looking at me like O'Neill's being long-winded. I'm being long-winded because this man is going to talk a lot after this, right? Because no, and, and, and I'm, so I'm trying to own this before the jokes come. I want to own this because you know we're going to discuss people of color traveling out of the country and the benefits of that. And, you know, obviously the benefits of being aware and knowing, you know, uh, which passports rank high on the passport list. It just so happens, right, you know, that um, a Jamaican passport don't really rank that high on the list, you know. So um, I'm here with uh, these fine gentlemen. Uh, you have the floor, Alzo Slate. <laughs> First off, can I just say that, did you just eight mile? Also, yeah, you just yeah, did. Yeah, yeah. Give me some. He ain't got no jokes. No, no, no I just no, ate no. my. He ain't got no <laughs> jokes. Hey, I'm gonna kill his. Whatever like you say. <laughs> whatever <laughs> you say for the next 45 minutes, y'all ain't gonna laugh. Yeah, I already, I already owned up. I own my shit. I'm not a traveled man of color, and I regret that. I'm gonna make up for that though. I'm going to, but I made a mistake. That's I got what he roasted thought 10 for days it. ago. He was <laughs> I thought I was. I was. I was. Well, listen. Well, this, this is the thing. So I remember you saying. You were going to Japan to set up a, a jujitsu training center. No, no, Isaac was going out there, and we we're going to support him and and, and the facility out there. Right, things, right. Some things of that right. And I was yeah. like, ah, that's dope. And then I follow the uh, the Instagram page of a uh, UACTP, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I look on the stories, and they got you know their journey through the airport. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> Bitmake is good, out there. Bitmake you know is good. Man? But yo, <laughs> check this out though. So I'm like, I know, I know O'Neal gonna pop in the video at some point. Because if it's a video being made for Instagram. He's gotta be in it. He gotta be in it. He gotta be Yo, in. and you know how, you know, the stories, they got the little clips that, you know, you just mm -hmm. tap and go from one yep. to another. I watch all of the clips. And I'm like, okay, maybe O'Neal gonna pop up in the next one. I'm like, well, maybe O'Neal gonna pop up in the next one. Oh no, O'Neal is the one recording. But even if, <laughs> <laughs> but even if he was recording, you knew you would have heard his voice. Yep. Yeah. And I was like, damn. I don't think O'Neal went to Japan. So then I, you know, I go to the gym the next day, and in pops O'Neal. And then and then you were there. I was there. And I had to I had to do you know I had to I had to make an assessment. I was like. If I was in this situation, mm -hmm. I'd have been pissed. I'd have been frustrated. I'd have been sad. I'd have been disappointed. Uh, and this was only a couple of days after. That's a good assessment so you know what too. I'm saying? That so was I'm very like, nice Yeah, so I'm like, okay, let me just give a shot across the bow. Mm -hmm. You know, a little slight roast, <laughs> slight around, roast. The, around the subject <laughs> of his travel or his nice inability to travel mm -hmm. because I, it, you know, it was still a sensitive subject at that point. Mm -hmm. But now that we 10 days removed, 10, 12 days removed, use a dummy for not knowing that you needed a visa to go to Japan. <laughs> I wouldn't say all that though. Thank I you, Renee. I wouldn't say all that. Thank, thank you, Renee. I, I, it's fun. Just, nah, don't do that. <laughs> okay, don't okay, do that. Okay, I'm sorry. Because sorry. In, in, in this sense of travel and all of that, and just even being from a different country, we're a lot alike. Um, I'm from Trinidad, right. and I moved out here when I was really young as well too, same, same as him. And I've just been to the US ever since I've been here. 
I've been I've been to Mexico once with my dad, but this was when I was like thirteen or twelve I've, or something. I've like never that. been to Mexico. Um, well, I've been to one place <laughs> more than he has, um, but it's I would say as an immigrant, like you don't really know the ins and outs a whole lot in terms of mm, how mm-hmm, to travel mm-hmm. and passports and all of that. I mean, as an immigrant, most of the time you're trying to come here. Mm-hmm, and that, mm-hmm. this is the final destination. You're just trying mm-hmm, to make it to the mm-hmm, States, mm-hmm. you know? And so once you make it to the States, you're not really trying to go anywhere else, mm-hmm. you know? Because you're trying to make a living. You're trying to work. You're trying to mm-hmm. make something of yourself. You're trying to get the American dream. You're trying to, yeah. you know, you're trying to do mm-hmm. it all, yeah. you know? Um, yeah. So I would say that, like, and I recently got my passport renewed. And mm-hmm. I hadn't had my passport renewed ever since I came to this country. <clears throat> You know, and so for me, it was something where I got to learn from his experience. I swear, oh, okay, like I need a visa. I don't just renew the passport. Passports ain't the same. Exactly. I didn't know. I didn't know that. And I I literally, I had to go through hoops as well to get my Trinidadian passport uh, taken care of. Like when I went to New York recently, I actually went to DC first to get my passport renewed. Mm -hmm. And all the hoops and Ooh. valleys and everything that I had to mm-hmm. do to actually mm-hmm. get that. I almost didn't get it done while I was there because I got a call that morning. They're like, oh, our computers are down. So you might need to come back. I'm like, I am leaving Yeah, the today. bureaucracy when it comes to passports mm-hmm. is ridiculous. Yeah. And, and when I called you a dummy, I was partly serious, but partly facetious. It didn't feel like that. I was open. It didn't feel like that. I was open. Do you, do you but, need an apology? I, I, I would like one, but I mean, you know, only, you know. A po- an apology for what? For calling me a dummy. It hurt. It hurt. I was open. I, I was no, look, I was look, no, 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 no. Look me in my eye okay. and tell me Tell me 100% if you are serious. <laughs> I'm that, 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 also, that I hurt your I'm feelings. I'm about to say it. Okay. Also, you 100% hurt my feelings. I need you to look past this muscular, tough exterior and see that I'm a sensitive man. It hurt. That hurt that you said that, Alzo. <laughs> well, I mean, but I could tell you sensitive by that jacket you got on. <laughs> but if I really hurt your nah, feelings. No, 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 man. So I'm, come on, man. Come on, man. You know, my shoe dies up thug. You know. Man, 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 you, man, ain't got to, you ain't got to go to the opposite extreme. <laughs> you know Black man mean? apologizing. Black, that's what we do. We, we apologize, man. Love to see it. No, nah, but you know, you know, which brings up a really important thing about, you know, the the being knowledgeable and understanding that. Cause oftentimes, listen, I'm gonna be honest and expose myself even more. I had multiple, multiple chances of, uh, of opportunities to renew my passport a long time mm-hmm. ago. I should have gotten my citizenship a long time ago. A lot of things that I just sat on and didn't do, spend my money on other things, did other foolish mm-hmm. things. And then when the opportunity came up for me to go, I'm like, okay, boom. I had sent my passport in six months ago. When you guys say the bureaucracy <laughs> and the difficulty, listen. Y'all out there, listen, especially if you're an immigrant that's been here for a while, that's not a U.S. citizen. The things I had to do, the things I had to go through, the, the amount of calls I made. I mean, I literally would make 10 calls to Jamaica a day. 10 calls. Talk to the, the, the head of the consulate, crack jokes with her, buddy up with her. How you doing this morning? Did it get hung up on by people? It was crazy. And it was still by the grace of God that they sent my passport to me because we go through the same th- Washington. Mm-hmm. I had sent my passport to Washington. And normally the way the consulate in Jamaica does is they send the passport to Washington, then they send it back to you. I got on such a first name basis with the woman there. Guys, she sent it to my crib. Mm-hmm. But it, it was after, you know, a smooth three weeks of just going through hoops. And we say this all to say that, you know, because Alzo, obviously, and I'm going to hand this over to you, is the complete antithesis of you and I. Mm-hmm. He is a not well, the complete entity. Well, 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 you know what I mean. I mean, tra- traveling wise. Within the mm-hmm. yeah, 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 traveling yeah. wise. <laughs> not, <I was> like, <laughs> damn. Not, 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 <laughs> traveling wise, I mean, you know, you're an amazing correspondent for Vice. You've been all over the world, and in a lot of respects, as much as you know, I like to crack jokes and we 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 we, you know, we join with each other and whatnot. Man, I and especially when I got stood up at the airport, I envy the fact that you've been all over the world because that is probably number one on my my list of everything, above everything else, above Mm -hmm. any other thing, Mm -hmm. you know, um, is to see everything and expand my horizons and see the world and see what the world has to offer and the different cultures and everything, you know? So if you don't mind, we'd love for you to to, to speak on that a little bit, you know? Well, I mean, I really consider myself blessed to, to be able to travel for work. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like I get to I get to go all across the country and across the world um 
to learn from people, to talk to people, um, to tell stories about people, about situations and issues. And I think had it not been for, you know, this work opportunity, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have traveled as much as I did, but I do recognize the power of having a passport just in general. I remember my, uh, one of my little brothers in college, he was in business school and one of his professors on the syllabus, it was required by the end of the semester that you had a passport. Wow. And this mm -hmm. is undergrad at a, at a black institution. And so yeah. he was like, mm -hmm. he's like, part of your grade is you possessing a passport wow. by the end of the semester. That's amazing. And, and, yeah. and, and the impetus behind that was like, if you don't have it, maybe it's, you know, it's not a, it's not a big deal. You don't mm -hmm. intend to travel. Okay. But if you do have a passport, it just opens up pathways in your imagination to know that if I want to go, mm -hmm. I can. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? And even mm -hmm. if, so if you weren't, you know, these are 18, 19 year old kids. Yeah you know, black kids, and they may not have ever thought about a passport. You know, mm -hmm. some of them first generation college students. Yeah. And I imagine this, you know, similar to like being, you know, being an immigrant, you know, it's like, yeah. I didn't think I could, I didn't even think about traveling, mm -hmm. but now you're telling me I have to have this passport. So what is it? Why do I have to have this passport? What does it do? It allows you to go different places. Now it's in my, in my mind yeah. as an option. You know what I'm saying? Even if I don't take advantage of it. And I feel like the 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 power of of imagination combined with opportunity, bruh, it's it's something that Kim folks, you know, whether you, you know, born in America or immigrant, you're a person of color, like some of this thing, some of these things came secondary and tertiary when in like white families, it's, it's a given. It's like, yeah, yeah. Joe's got passports. Absolutely. You know, when they come home from the hospital, then <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> you know absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. Yep. That, it's, it's a given. You know, and um, and that's a um that's what I'm looking for. I mean, it's it's always been the thing that's um set us back as young men and young women of color, um, getting off the block, seeing the world, having our uh, horizons broaden, seeing other cultures, experiencing other cultures, experiencing other cultures, true food, as mm -hmm. opposed to the Americanized mm -hmm. version of it. Um, yeah, you you hit the nail on the head. It just really unlocks something in your brain. And for me, you know, I consider myself an educated person. I've been to school, went to colleges, that's another. And for that to have happened to me, I, I felt a level of uh, embarrassment yeah, as well. Yeah, you know, yeah, it was yeah, embarrassing. Yeah, like, man, yeah, and, and yeah. I'm glad and you're have, in front of your partners too. From, listen, my boy pulled out his phone and started recording me. I wanted to smash his phone, but I, <laughs> but I deserved it. I was like, what you, what you recording, motherfucker? But, yeah, but you know, I deserved it because I'm like, how am I going to be this age and not have understood this? And, and I, you know, luckily I have friends that are, you know, not remorseful at all. Not one of them consoled me. They all were like, you an idiot. You should have known this. <laughs> You're, that's what you get. This, this, that, and the other. You know, so, you know, um, we thought it was a, a very... It's always going to be a timely topic, especially with our people. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, because I agree. I think it's one of, it's one thing to be born here yeah. and to have an American passport. And it's another yeah. thing because you really don't know. There is no like, oh, you should have known. Like, you really don't because things change all the time overseas. Yeah. Like when I was getting my passport renewed, I had to get a new birth certificate. I had to get an electronic birth mm, certificate, mm. Do you know what I'm saying? <clears throat> which I had no clue about. I couldn't just use the birth certificate that I had in the first place, mm -hmm. you know? So I had to call and fill out a form, send it to Miami, to the consulate there. And then, then they would send it to me back. It's mm -hmm. just all this, all this hoops and all this stuff. Yeah. You just, you really don't know, yeah. you know? And I think that's, that's the thing it's, it's, you have to have a little bit of grace <clears throat> yeah, you on know, yourself. Going through all this red tape mm -hmm. to unlock that, mm -hmm. right? To be able to go and travel the world and see all these amazing, amazing things. Now, even though we've gone through all these things, I don't regret it. I, even though I didn't you get to the band, I, I don't regret you it. Can't. Now I know it. I mean, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I mean, what would it do for you? Mm -hmm. What good would it do for you to, to sit on that and yeah. to get all the way there? And then you know, now you know. Now I know. <laughs> so I now you, I bet you won't be at that airport again without a visa. You know, at least at least. The, but it could have been worse. At least you was going. You know, you just going to support your partner that's opening up a gym in yeah. Tokyo. Imagine you with your gal. And y'all, you didn't plan the whole vacation, the itinerary, mm -hmm. and all of that. And then you get to the airport, 
She good, but you ain't. Well, first of all, let me tell you, she wouldn't have never known if that had happened, I'd have dropped to the floor and act like I was having a stomach, <laughs> a stomach <laughs> ulcer. He like, listen, my ulcer, <laughs> my ulcer acting up. I, I would have got, got I, uh, something. I'd have got something right then and there. Oh, I can't go. With this. Hey, there's Yo. no way. There's no way I would have, you know, allowed that to happen. Mm -hmm. um, you know. As far as like learning from those mistakes, listen, listen, I'm already over prepared. I've already made, uh, you know, provisions. I'm overly prepared for they're everything they're now. They're, they're in the process of getting this Japanese citizenship. Oh, you can't. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> you you learned the Japanese, Japanese, Japanese yeah. citizenship. Yeah. citizenship on Duolingo. On Duolingo. <laughs> Everywhere, man. Everywhere. <laughs> you know, um, and, it, and this speaks to a, a larger issue, you know, in our community. Uh, as far as you know, like you said, the, you know, white kids damn near go home with a passport. They, they, their, their parents prep them for these things. You know, my parents never talk to me about yo. You need to, you know, O'Neill, did you re renew your passport? Da, 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 da. These things we don't get talked about. Just, mm -hmm. just it's equivalent to talking about bills and finances at the table. You know, these things mm -hmm. they're not. They're, I also think I didn't mean to cut you no, off. No, 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 go, go, go. I, I think it. You know, also I want you to talk the most because you're a traveled man. This is amazing. Yeah, but I'm physically traveled, but I'm, I, I imagine you brothers intellectually have traveled as well. Ooh. Man, snap your finger, dog. This is how we do it. <laughs> yeah. this, this, why, you always, why you always late on shit like this, this, man? Is this like a spoken word? Yeah. This is how you do yeah, yeah, yeah. right. What is higher? <laughs> what is learning? <laughs> I got denied from Japan, <laughs> but I am still a man. <laughs> With the drum. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, no, I was about to say, like, in so many areas of life when it comes to kin folks like in America or immigrants, what have you, we have to concern ourselves with practical matters. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like what, you know, when, it, what, when is the next check coming? Yep. When is the, 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 the yep. next, when is the next meal going to come from? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so the, what would seem to be extracurricular, like passport and traveling the world, those, those, those matters are not of the utmost importance when you got kids to feed. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and so yeah. it's like it's like when you when you go to school, when you go into college and you got to work two, three jobs to pay for school. That takes up a level of brain space. That takes up amount of brain space that you should be allocating to your studies. Yeah. But you worrying about paying for school when you should be focusing on what you're doing in mm -hmm. school, which yeah. is learning. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And so I think it, you know, it just it just speaks to, you know, just our community in general around other issues like what is practical? What what is it that we need to fix right now? My mm -hmm. car broke down and I gotta get to work. So and how much it costs to renew a passport? How much do it cost to get a passport? I'm not worried about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Cause yeah. I gotta use this money for other stuff. Man, amen, I mean that's, that's it's layered. <clears throat> I feel that. I feel like it's one of those things where I mean, I I grew up working a ton of jobs. I worked retail, I worked at gyms, I was a bartender, all that. I never really had a job that had like vacation pay. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm mm -hmm. talking about? Mm -hmm. So it's like, if I'm going somewhere, that's, I have to allocate that, you know? Yeah. Okay, that's this many hours. You know, this is this much out of my savings or whatever it may be, mm -hmm. if I had mm -hmm. a savings at the time, mm -hmm. you know? Um, exactly as to what you just <laughs> said, like if if you're of a certain working class, like, you're not going anywhere, yeah. you know? And it's sad, but it's like, and I don't want to say that in a way as to where there's no hope. Like you could, you know what I'm saying? Like you act like, yeah, you I, could, commend, yeah. <laughs> I commend one of my little sisters at the, the Sage, shout out Sage. Uh, shout she, out Sage. She, she made a decision where she was like, I'm going to take my time doing college and I'm going to mm -hmm. travel. Cause she's mm -hmm. like, I'm sick of all my rich friends going all these mm -hmm. places mm -hmm. and doing all these things. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, mm -hmm. and she was honestly probably the first one out of my siblings to really start going places. Like yeah. she's going to Ireland yeah. and yeah. you know, she's going, you know, Hawaii and everywhere else, yeah. you know? Um, yeah. But she had to allocate, you know what I'm yeah. saying? I remember um, she would just save up. I remember her first job she worked at, I think it was Chick-fil-A. That was my first job. Was it? <laughs> or something like that, you know? But she's saving up to like go to Coachella mm -hmm. and like travel mm -hmm. like to other places in the world mm -hmm. and stuff like that too. Mm -hmm. So it's mm -hmm. just, you know, it's it's a little different. I think I think it is like with successive generations, um, they're recognizing the importance of travel mm -hmm. and expanding your horizons. And I just look at it with regard to how I 
view fr- freedom. Yeah. Because mm. for me, um, freedom presupposes that you have the ability to choose. And the ability to choose presupposes that you have options to choose from. Absolutely. So if you increase your options, mm-hmm. then you directly increase your level of freedom. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah, I, I used yeah. to do this exercise with with uh, my students where it's like, like I'll give you four letters, A, B, C, and D. I'll give you A, B, C, D, and E. I'll give him A, B, C, D, E, and F, and I'll give you a minute to go to the board and come up with as many words as you can using only the letters that I've given you, yeah. right? And then so after the exercise, obviously he's going to have more words because he has more letters to choose from. Yeah. And if you equate that with with like a vocabulary of experiences, yeah. right? So then the more experiences you have, it increases your vocabulary to where you can engage with more people because you're of the world at yes. this point. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> yes. And so to me, it's like whether it's learning a new language. I mean, you can you can actually increase your level of freedom and options without going anywhere. Yeah. You know, obviously it helps if you can go travel because as much as I travel, I recognize that the world is very small, bro. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We ain't no different than that. You want to give us an example of that? Yeah. You know? Like, and this is just, this is just uh, domestically, right? So mm-hmm. I did a story on the border of uh, Texas and Mexico. And yeah. this is when Trump was in office and he's talking about, you know, the border wall and all of that. And mm-hmm. so he was like, drug runners coming across the border and they kidnapping kids and whatever. And, you know, stealing dogs, whatever he was saying. <laughs> yeah. And uh, and I went and we went down there to talk to the people. And I remember talking to this middle-aged white woman that had a Trump hat on and all of that. And I said, um, she was very defensive at first. Like her body language was defensive. And I, you know, I, this is off camera. We just having a regular conversation. <clears throat> and, uh, and I said, um, she said, "Where are you where are you from?" And I said, "I lived in New I, I live in New York now." And she said, mm, "I never I never go to New York. They wouldn't like me up there." Mm-hmm. I said, "Why you say that?" They said, "They see in my Trump they see me in my Trump stuff, and they just assume that I'm this and that, and they wouldn't like me." And I said, "Perhaps." And I said, well, "What if I came here with a Black Lives Matter shirt on? What would you think? Would you make assumptions about me?" She said, "Yeah." And I said, "Well." There's a a single black woman in Chicago whose son got shot by the police. And he was walking home from school and he didn't do nothing. Now, you're a mother. Can you relate to this woman? Take color, all of that out of it. Urban, take all of that out of it. And we started just having a conversation about how if you were to just suppress or just bracket your personal narrative and your judgment around other people's narrative, yeah. and you could empathize with them, then you'd be able to recognize, yeah, I see where they're coming from. And inversely, like you down here supporting Trump, why? Because she said, well, I've seen some people come across the border. They're hungry, they're tired. We ain't seen no drug dealers, but if Trump says a wall can be better and I think it can, then I'm going to support him. And who am I to go down there and tell her otherwise? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And then it's like the, I go to, uh, you go to a place like, uh, I don't want to, let me see, where was I? You t- we were talking about wrestling, right? And grappling. Yeah. I was in Dagestan, <clears throat> yeah, in the mountains yeah. of Dagestan, bro. Yeah, yeah. Them jokers ain't never seen no Negroes up there. <laughs> How kids, they react yo, to kids you? coming up to me doing this shit, like rubbing to me and seeing yeah, the oh, shit come yeah, off, yeah, bro. Yeah, really? They yeah. touching my hair and stuff. And you know, of course my initial reaction is, yeah, 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 but yeah. then I also know they're kids. Mm-hmm. They, they're curious. They've yeah. never seen, mm-hmm. you know, someone like me. And so to an extent, I let them rock because yeah, yeah. if I was a kid, I would be the same way. Yeah. Genuine curiosity. Mm-hmm. Genuine curiosity, yeah, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it's, and then you sit down with these folks at dinner, bro. They want to feel significant. Mm-hmm. They want to be able to provide for their families. They want to feel loved. 
They want to 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 exist in a space where um, they're valued. All of us want that, bro. Yes. But the problem is, is when me satisfying my needs stands in the way of you satisfying yours. Now we got a problem. So in order for my kid to eat, I got to take food out of your family's plate. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That that happens in in multiple ways. And I guess the question that, you know, pops up in in our heads is like, okay, how do we how do we get around that? How do we, you know, circumvent that? You know, how do we stop that from happening, you know? Stop what from happening? That clash that occurs when what I want, <clears throat> what you want gets in the way of what I want. And so yeah. I need to feed my kids. So I'm going to go against you in any way, shape or form that I, I, that I see fit or what's presented in front of me, like a Trump saying, let's build a wall, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. um, traveling allows you to see that the world is smaller than you think it is and that we're all the same, but still in all, we form biases and we form opinions based on the question I'm asking is what based on what? Jason, feel free to chime in, you know. We form biases from the time that we were born because I was born into this. I had no control over it. Yeah. I was born without my consent yeah. into a world that I had no control over that was already in motion. You know what I'm saying? So I'm born into a group already that had a strong narrative before I got here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So people telling me what it means to be black, what mm -hmm. it means to be American, what it means to be male. So what it means to be a little boy is to play with trucks and, you know, and play football and basketball and all of that. Okay. Yeah. What it means to be black is, you know, to be proud and to, to recognize that you come from, uh, well, in, in school they tell you you come from slaves, but then you recognize later on that you come from kings and queens and da da da, da. But, <clears throat> okay, then you're born, let's say you're born in, in, in L.A. L.A. got a football team. Your dad... Love the football team. He's taken you to the games since you was a kid. So you a, 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 a L.A. Rams fan, right? Yeah. yeah. And then and then here comes the Chargers or the Raiders or whoever the, the 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 rival is, San Francisco 49ers, and you hate them. Yeah. You hate them, but, but you hating them, you had no control over yeah. because you grew up. In this culture, yeah. you grew up in a culture. Okay, you you proud and black, and then these white folks come along. You you start roasting white people. You hate white people, or you hate people who rock Adidas or or, or Nike. Because you know what? I'm a I'm a Reebok dude. Like it's mm -hmm. it's all of these things yeah. that have been forced upon us since we were young, and we appropriate. But it makes sense though, because when you're part of a group. You feel a sense of pride. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. You yeah. feel a sense of, of, of significance. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so. And this is us and that's y'all. This is us mm -hmm. and that's y'all. And so it it's beneficial to me to have this bias because everybody that rocked with me got this bias mm -hmm. and I rock with them because they got this bias. Mm -hmm. I guess the next level of that is we better than y'all. You know, because that's just, it, 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 yeah, that makes a lot of sense also. But I think going back to travel, it makes it a lot harder to maintain that bias when you're in their stadium. Absolutely. 100%. Absolutely. <clears throat> when you're confronted yeah. with other people's opinions in a direct format, in a face-to-face -face conversation, in their territory especially, mm -hmm. yeah. you mm -hmm. find yes. it a lot harder to just turn turn on the mute switch. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And for no other reason that you, you're you able to see the, you know, the humanity in them. Yeah. You know, I was taught that these people was like this. Yes. And now I, I sit down and, and I'm just chatting with them and I'm like, shit. Yeah. I can't even categorize them in this way anymore. Yeah. And I'm sure we've all had uh we've all had that experience on some level. Well, you know, speak for yourself. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I've always been open to all people. Okay. My bad. Me too. As as you guys can see, I'm not really myself today because <laughs> the Japan thing's still tearing me up. Alzo hasn't apologized to me yet. That's about cool. what? About we well, used to call me a dummy for not knowing. No, that. I thought that you you had yeah. later on said that you didn't need an apology. You were I, okay. I, I just wanted I said that because I didn't want force you to do something that you didn't want to do, Alzo. But that's okay. Just, let's just, just keep, an apology, man. Let's keep talking. That's let's cool. Just I ain't tripping. Apology. I ain't tripping over that. We just keep talking. Just, on the private. No, no, that's okay. You ain't got to talk to him. Right. 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 Don't force me to do anything okay. I want to do. All right. <laughs> you think you think it's possible to force me to do something I don't want to do in this setting? 
no Alzo. We don't think you can be forced to do anything because you're Alzo. You move when you Why want are you to talking move. to the camera? Because yeah. right, I'm talking to the whoever, whoever's going to tune in. Alzo ain't out there. Like, Alzo right like here. Like and subscribe. Uh, I just want to like and subscribe. Tune Somebody in. forced but, you to wear those pants though. That's for sure. Give me some. Give me some, my boy. He owned your ass. Renee, he owned you. Renee, Renee, you. On a on a real, on a real. No, no, no. Don't be trying to. Don't be trying to jump out the water now. Don't be trying to jump out the water now. Face him. Getting back. Getting back to the. Don't be trying to jump out the water now. Getting getting back to the topic. Dusty ass kids. This is vans, and they're supposed to be dusty. Getting back to the topic. I have a question. I have a designer dust. I have a question for you. Y'all see how Renee? You see how Renee tried to throw a rock and then run? So that's how I grew up. That's how we yeah, do yeah, it. Yeah, get, get back to the point, though. Uh, get, get back, get back to the point. <laughs> but okay, but question for both of you. Growing up, like say preteen, teens, um, did you feel like travel was for you? Did you feel like travel was actually like possible for you? Um, Alzo said something that, w- that was very accurate that I can apply to my life when he mm-hmm. says that uh, even though if you don't travel internationally, you can travel other ways. Mm-hmm. Television was escapism for me. Mm-hmm. What I couldn't physically go and do, mm-hmm. you know, I, I envisioned and imagined from watching television shows, from reading. I built my vocabulary from reading comic books. Mm-hmm. I would literally read comic books, Marvel books, and just and just use all the words the Silver Surfer would use or Professor X, or because I th- I just thought they sounded of, cool. Now things mm-hmm. make sense. To me. <laughs> now things make sense. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is why this is why O'Neal t- speaks like this. Boom, bam. Pow. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm trying to talk. I'm trying to ask a question. You cracking jokes, man. You know what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm being serious. Um, so yeah, I, television and me, don't, Jason, don't laugh, man. You with me, bro. Um, escapism was provided through television and, mm-hmm. and media. So I, I literally would propel myself there with mm-hmm. my imagination. I know that not, not everyone does that, but that helped me out a lot. Mm-hmm. Almost to the point where people treated me as I was a well-traveled, worldly mm-hmm. person, mm-hmm. knowing in truth, I'm really from the block. You feel me? You know what I'm saying? I'm really from the block. Okay. See, but but this, you know, is, I could, this, is, this is where this is where like he don't want us to joke when he being serious, but then he going. <laughs> you, know, okay, you know what I'm saying? Hey, hey Renee, 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 you you friends with him now? We've been friends. About his pants. You friends but we all friends. friends yeah. Right? Just because he say I got painter pants while he's he wearing them dusty ass vans it's easy, and you in that tight ass jacket. We still all <laughs> friends, still, all three of us. We still accept each other. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. Yes. Hey, I ain't gonna lie. I just gotta say something. But I want to stay on this topic, but this has been bothering me since you walked through the door. Why the fuck is your hat pointing at the top like that? Because nobody fuck with that. Why is it like pointing like that? Can I show you how to wear it? No. All right, all right, I just want to see that no. shit like an elf. You like an elf. Or this some is shit my like expression. I, this is I don't how I like. Well, I don't like myself. that, bro. Where, 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 where it ain't pointing like that, man. You know, yeah. when, you, when you around me, I need you to be fresh. You feel me? <laughs> he looking like a UPS worker. <laughs> <laughs> Package. We're going to finish your question. I'm sorry. Go ahead, man. No, that was I mean, my question was basically, did you feel like it was in the cards for you? I, I to didn't travel. Even, I didn't even. It wasn't even within my purview. Like, I, well, not that purview is the wrong word. Um, <laughs> it wasn't. It I'm was, sorry, I had to laugh. I had to laugh. Wow. When you said purview, <laughs> you said purview. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> hey, don't edit this. I gotta laugh. <laughs> hey, when he said that, I was hoping he wouldn't correct it. Oh, all right, that's it. I'm sorry. I just laughed at myself. I, I, oh, so I'm making mental notes. <laughs> <laughs> yo, make, yo, if, 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 so you want? So I, ca- I can I'm call sorry. out myself. I, said, I'm sorry, I can call man. out myself. <laughs> now, if you want me to add you to the list, I'm a gunslinger, man. Where are you a gunslinger, bro? Calm down. If you want me to add you to the list of call outs for <laughs> grammatical I know, I know, mistakes, no, 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 no. Hey, I apologize. Dude. See, look at me. I apologize. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> You're apologizing he, for your own. He shoot, he shooting everybody. Anybody can get it. I'm sorry, but go ahead. That's your all jokes aside. I yeah. forgot what I was saying. You were answering his question about oh, what you think was oh, in the cars. Yeah, traveling. yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. It 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 wasn't even. I didn't even think about international travel. For us, travel was road tripping to my grandparents' house. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and you know, I had just like most kids, I had a very fervent imagination, but that that yearn for information wasn't being satisfied by a desire to travel mm-hmm. international or mm-hmm. traveling internationally. Um, yeah. I don't think I, I don't think I got on a plane until I was in high school. 
Hmm. Yeah. I have to weigh in because I think I am the antithesis. antithesis excuse That's me. You of, fucking up. Yeah. You sure you don't want, sure you don't want to say purview? <laughs> I think this is, yeah, I'm the purview of all this. I, uh, let's see. I, I was, I went to Canada for the first time when I was in first grade. I went to Ireland when I was in third grade. I went to, to, to France, Germany, and Belgium when I was in eighth grade. Now you just now you just bragging, I, right? Well, I'm just saying it. The but contrast that's my is point. insane. Yeah. My, my parents were I like to travel unusually. I mm, say yeah. even for white people, stereotypically. Yeah. Even for white people, yeah, yeah, yeah. I wasn't wealthy or anything, but I was like privileged and an only child, and they had a love for travel, so I benefited. And then I also had family uh, that were involved in Ireland and Poland that helped. Mm -hmm. yeah but uh yeah mm -hmm. i went all over the place yeah. and, that, and that's just the thing i think it's a misunderstanding that you have to have a lot of money yeah to travel that's yeah. a big thing now yes. you have to, you got to have some bread now like you don't want to travel being broke yeah you know mm -hmm. you want to be able to sleep at a place with a soft bed and some hot water but and eat every once in a especially while especially when you're already broke here right, <laughs> <laughs> right. i mean real talk though yeah, you know yeah, yeah. it's a thing where <laughs> You know, if you're traveling, like I like I don't really since I haven't traveled a whole lot, um, I don't really know what the expenses are like when it comes to like traveling overseas and all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, like to mm -hmm. me, I just think like I just save up a big lump sum of money mm -hmm. and then, you know, see what happens. Um, but to my point, that's what I'm saying. Like you've been traveling ever since you were in what the first grade, you know? Yeah. And just yeah. think, I mean, for I'm sorry, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, no, correct. Mm -hmm. And I've always thought it's like an essential part of life. Exactly. Just given that, yeah. it's, yeah. it's part exactly. of the fabric, I think. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's funny because, you know, when my white friends would tell me that they're going backpacking through Europe. And, you know, <laughs> I did do that as well. <laughs> did, did you, you do that? that? <clears throat> of course I did that. That guys. was extremely unfathomable to me. Mm -hmm. even, even when I didn't have the means to do it, I was like, I would never go backpacking through Europe. But you, go ahead. Go but ahead. then, it's, but it's also a thing that also keeps us back as people of color is we categorize things as what things white people do. Yes, absolutely. Yes. You know what I'm yes. saying? And there's some yeah. things white folks do that should be categorized, and we don't, and we shouldn't have nothing to do with it. Like, like we want to name one thing: the bungee jumping. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know that. <laughs> yeah, we ain't got no business <laughs> bungee jumping. You know? Yeah. Uh, but all jokes aside, it's it's when you put it in that space that's something that white people do, mm -hmm. right? And especially something that could be of significant benefit to us yeah. by way of expanding our horizons and us leveling up psychologically, intellectually, emotionally, then we, we do ourselves a real disservice. Mm -hmm. A grand disservice, you're right. I mean, even at this age now, I find myself saying that stupid thing, that, man, that's what white people do. And it's like, who deemed that? Who, who said that? What, what grand book descended from the heavens that said this is what white people do or this is what black people do? Probably the British Empire. The idea of white people being the only ones to travel. Yeah. I mean, come on, that's a that's a ridiculous idea. Like the only people mm -hmm. what travel going around to different places is a white thing. I mean, like absolutely not throughout history. But at some point some that label was put on, so that's that's weird. It's gotta be like another product of white supremacy or something. Yeah. Definitely. Colonialism. One hundred percent. Yo, speaking of colonialism, did you all see the uh the coach of Morocco? No. You know, the Moroccan right. soccer team? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when they beat, who did they beat? Spain? I think they beat Spain. And someone, a reporter had asked them, like, um, are you, something to the effect of, this is not the exact quote, but something to the effect of, like, are you proud that there's um, Arab representation in the World Cup, in the semifinals or whatever? And he yeah. was like, we fly the African flag. Being being from Morocco, we right in there, we 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 right in there with Senegal, Nigeria, Ghana. It's like we are an African. That's country. Well, I did see a post, bro, from that. From that, yeah, that, bro, that's is, huge. That's huge. That's huge. That's huge because that's huge. for so long throughout history, even it, like for like in 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 elementary school, middle school, I never thought of Morocco and Egypt as a part of Africa. No, yeah. They yeah. always made yes. they always made it seem like they were yeah, separate. They were separate. So you know true. what I'm saying? Especially yeah. Egypt, bro. Cuz yeah. you know Egypt got the pyramids, they yeah. had the yeah. technology that 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 can match some of the 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 advances we have today and people still marvel at what they did back then. They're mm -hmm. like, "Ain't no way no Negroes did this shit." Yeah. 
Yeah, like, that's well, actually, very it wasn't true. Negroes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because uh, yeah, yesterday it said in the news that they were the first team uh, African first team African team. To, yeah, mm -hmm. to ever. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. That, that's that. That's huge. It's really huge. Because you're right. When when I was young, I never thought the two. I never thought. Egypt or Morocco was in Africa. But they didn't they, yeah. they didn't teach us that way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was as if they were separate. But I digress. Sorry. No, no, not really. Mm -hmm. You're not really digressing yeah. at all. Mm -hmm. Um, which is so crazy, right? Because mankind comes from Africa and <clears throat> this, that, and forth. And it's just so wild, man. Um, God, I had a question that I wanted to ask you, Alzo, about in your travel. Oh, okay. <clears throat> before, before you got this job, this is a correspondent, an amazing correspondent. Al, if you haven't seen Alzo on Vice, check him out. He uh, He's just an amazing correspondent. And I never really give him that much props on anything. He's but, right. but he, and as Renee said, he's Renee I. probably ain't even never seen that. Renee, not actually. Even, Renee, <laughs> uh -huh. you don't know who Kunta Kinte is, so I'm not surprised. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, in all your travels, bro, in all your travels, what has been the most eye-opening thing that you've experienced that it just blew your mind like, wow? Or, or has there been multiple things? There's been a few things. Um, you also have to understand when we travel and do what we do, we're usually seeing the underbelly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. of the places we go to like yeah. we're not we're not doing all-inclusive five you know five-star resorts but the underbelly you know. is where the realness is though that's where all yeah that yeah out. yeah yeah um i have to say when i um a, a very frustrating trip was to nigeria no why why was that is okay. because you land there and you see the wealth of human resources, the wealth of natural resources. And you see so much potential there that has been exploited by European countries, you know, so like, you know, colonialism came in and just did a number to a number of African countries. And Nigeria is probably one of them at the top of the list. And, and people say, well, but Nigeria is, is is no longer colonized. They got Nigerian leadership. But what you have to understand is, so when the colonizers left, right, you, you've been institutionalized, right? And so the leaders that come into play that are usually put in by the folks who were mm -hmm. your colonizer, they just lead and mimic what, the colonizer was doing. They lead in the way that the colonizer was, right? And so you see all these folks that look like you and mass smart and, and intelligent, and but the, the level of poverty in Lagos, bro, it was astonishing. And as I understand it, it's around 60 to 70%, but they have so much in terms of like human resources, as I said, intellect, ingenuity, and the natural resources are plentiful. And it's, they've not yet been able to recover from that period of colonization to the extent that they can be self-sufficient and provide the world on their own what the world needs in order to build themselves up proper to be a, a, a leading nation in this so, world. So basically what you're saying is they have all these resources, all these natural resources, along with human resources and whatnot, but they're not able to tap into that, right? Would you would you liken it to what's happening over here with African Americans that, you know, a lot of people would say that, you know, we are the culture, we create amazing music, we create all these amazing things, but we don't own anything. We're not in charge of anything, you know? other races are running it and then we're the performers, we're the doers, as opposed to the people that own and control. We're yeah, not able I, to, yeah I mean, there's some, there's some, some parallels there, but it's the historical context yeah. is where, you know, you start to, the, the foundation of the problem is different. Therefore, gotcha. the, yeah. the, 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 the branches of the problem will be much more disparate, but that's, there are some similarities. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. Me? Talk, Renee. <laughs> um, this might sound weird, but I see more white people dealing with this issue in my neighborhood. Uh, of issue of? Of poverty and, and homelessness and all of that mm. than I do 
um, people of color in this in this moment. And I don't know if you guys. You're saying you see more white homeless people than black homeless people. Mm-hmm. That's an interesting assessment. Um, you know, ironically enough, I heard someone talking about that the other day about you know um, black people you know make up a, a big percentage of the, the the homeless population here, and up until I heard that statement, I never looked at <laughs> this is all so fucked up. I never looked at homeless people as black or white. I just <laughs> looked at them as homeless. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like you, if you're homeless, you homeless. I never looked at it as a, uh, a, mm-hmm. a a color thing. I've always looked at it as a color thing. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Growing up, I've always looked at it as a color thing. I don't know. You talking about that made me think about here, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, and and just trying to like think of a parallels when it comes to that. And I mean, there's so much poverty all over the world, but I feel like just here alone, I've always looked at it. Um, and this does sound a bit weird as a color thing. You know, mm-hmm. I've always thought like um, white people take care of their own or like Asian people take care of their own or you don't see that many pe- white people, white people, you know, poor. Or, I don't know. You did. You know? you, with that being said, and this is going to sound pretty fucked up too, but mm-hmm. just speaking completely honestly and full transparency, I always Those find the it. the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just speaking from my per my purview. Mm-hmm. Like me, myself, <laughs> personally, <laughs> I think. <laughs> Look at you, I get back with purview. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, ironically enough. Actually, what, purview wasn't that grammatical. Purview was terrible, man. For you purview was terrible, right. bro. No, no, purview, no. that was terrible, bro. Do you yeah. even remember it's how like I used a, it? It's like a combination of pervert and, and, oh and preview. Gosh. You my, know purview is an actual word, right? Purview is a word? I, oh, damn. Is that a word? Is that a oh word, Oh, my Jason? God. I thought, <laughs> I thought all this time you thought <laughs> I, I, I was using, you were, you were clowning purview? me for no, using it wrong. I was clowning you. I didn't know it was a real word. Purview is a real word. Yes, the thumbnails on Pornhub. Oh, well, there's a thumbnail what? for a Pornhub, bro. Come on. Bro. Yeah, it's a pervert preview. Yeah. Pervert no, preview. it is. He's purview a, is nah, when this. I'm just riffing, guys. Oh, it's a real man, I was, I was, I was like, <laughs> I'm about to throw that in so hard. I get shocked when I see a homeless Asian person. When I see a homeless Asian person, it, I'm like, what the hell? You? This is going to sound so, but I'm just being real. I'm like, you Asian. You ain't supposed to be homeless. And I've seen a number of the three homeless Asian people I've seen in my life. It, it, all all three times has been an older Asian woman, like someone's grandmother. Yeah, I think experientially think ex- experientially speaking, that's fine to say because yeah. you're just speaking from what you've seen. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. But then you got to peel away that layer, yeah. the surface mm-hmm. layer, and yeah. recognize that anybody can get down on their luck. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know, and it's just. In in this in this society we live in in America, is usually more times than not that people of color are much more at a disadvantage yeah, than mm-hmm. other folks, right? Mm-hmm. And so that's why you would see, you know, maybe more black or brown people that are homeless, which is counter to what you were just saying, mm-hmm. but um, which would you would you would necessarily see an Asian homeless person, uh, but bruh, these days Everybody layoffs and. Yeah. You know, people <clears throat> struggling to 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 pay their mortgage or pay their rent. It's like a cat could be, you know, one paycheck away. Yeah. I was at um Echo Park Lake uh during the beginning of the pandemic. And uh, you know, just to get out of the crib, I would go out there and, you know, get some tacos and just sit on the um on the grass and just, you know, watch the ducks walk by. And um <laughs> There was, there was this guy that got out of a, a, a van and he opened the door. It was getting kind of late because it was kind of dark, you know, in between. And he opened the van. The van lit up when he opened it. And there was a bed in there, but a perfectly made bed. The mm-hmm. van was clean inside. And homie got out of the van. I'm talking about dressed to the nines. Like had a cardigan on, some, you know, Deacon slacks like my boy over here. Uh, so, night, <laughs> so I mean, looking, and he got and he got out of the, the van with like, with, with an English bulldog. Yeah, the dog is an expensive dog to you know take care of. And he got out, walked around the park. The dog pooped. He had a bag, you know, cleaned the poop up, threw it away, and went right back in the van and just did whatever he did. And <clears throat> it was so telling because I'm like, look at this. I'm, I'm, I'm the way he had carried himself. I'm sure he probably still works, right? But doesn't have a home or whatnot. Mm-hmm. Him and his dog live out of his yeah. van, so. In these times, anybody can get it, you know? 
I think it's interesting too, because it's like, I have talks with friends of mine about this now where we talk about, are we ever going to be able to own a house? Like, like what, what our future is going to look like? Like mm -hmm. what's starting a family going to look like all of that. Yeah. And half of the people that I know are like, Hey man, like we're about halfway from taking, you know, all of our stuff and packing up shop and moving somewhere to the Caribbean or something yeah. like that. Yeah, 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 I was going to ask yeah, that you know? question next. That's crazy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, um, thinking about that now it's just kind of like before as i said earlier like as an immigrant like your destination is here like you mm -hmm. want to come here i remember watching tv in trinidad and i watched all these shows here mm -hmm. family matters and you know all this other stuff in baywatch and it's like oh that's where i need to be you know or you watch baywatch what's that or you watch baywatch david hasloff and pamela anderson and you know i don't know but my grandfather actually hated it when i watched that Shout yeah, out that's, to your so that's a whole other story. Shout out but, to your grandfather. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, <laughs> <laughs> but, but anyway, um, but no, but now when you look at like how much everything is going to cost in terms of like actually having a life here, yeah, yeah. you know, you, you feel like you would have a better quality of life going overseas now. You know, I mean, yeah. that's, that's my opinion. Especially considering the pandemic really shed a light on the, ability to work from home mm -hmm. from as long as you got an internet connection a decent internet connection you know mm -hmm. you can you can do that i think i remember i remember being in college i went to this like this student government convention thing and one of the keynote speakers um one of the days was a homeless guy and it was a, it was a conference around like world hunger and all of this stuff yeah. and it's and it's interesting they because he was the he was the speaker at the luncheon, and when you walked in to the space, it's about it's like three hundred of us. When you walked into the space, they gave you uh, one of three pieces of paper, and it was different colors, and that color was associated with the meal that you were going to get. More people, like one color, was associated with like a regular meal. Mm -hmm. Another color was associated with like, kind of like a gourmet meal. And then the third color was rice. And so they did that proportionate to the num amount of people who experienced poverty in the world. So there were more people in there eating rice at the luncheon than there were wow. eating a regular meal and a <clears throat> gourmet meal, yeah. you know? And so, <laughs> you know, you think you about to grow up for mm. real. <laughs> and, uh, and this is how they set it up. And mm. then they had the keynote speaker, this guy who was homeless. He was homeless at the time? He was homeless at the time. And what was interesting is the speech that he gave was the antithesis of what <laughs> the message they wanted to get across. Because he came in there with his dog. His dog was looking very healthy. And the crux of his speech was that I choose to be this. Wow. Because I don't want the burden of responsibility that people who own homes have who have to pay mortgage, who have to fix stuff that um, is is unexpected. You know, you have unexpected um, uh, requirements. You know, you may have to get the, the roof fixed or, or whatever. Yeah. Um, or paying rent where the landlord can increase it at yeah. any time. Yeah. He was like, as a homeless person, I have more control over my life than most of y'all. And in terms of eating, and he was a chubby fella. And he, he, was, he was funny because he was like, in terms yeah. of eating, as you can see, I ain't missing no meals. He got his wow. belly like this, bro. Wow. And, and, and during the Q&A, you know, people were mad curious. They're like, so, you know, where do you live? He's like, I, I, I found a, a safe space where I feel comfortable, you know, sleeping by myself. I have my dog who who serves as a, as a guard to protect me, you know, whatever. And they're like, well, what about food? He says, he said, I have relationships with grocery stores and fast food restaurants where I have them on a schedule. I know when they're going to throw the food out because of the expiration date. And we all know the expiration date is not absolute. And so he has them on a rotation. And he says, I'm probably eating better than all of y'all. Yo. Wow. And while the organizers of the event was like, yes. yeah. <laughs> yo. Yeah. See, that's 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 brilliant. You know, <clears throat> you know, covering the, these three uh 
topics that we just covered makes me think, you know, our, our friend of mine said to me, oh, we went over travel, uh, travel homeless went over homelessness and just um, the the uh, purview. <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> Yo, I can't believe you didn't know. I don't know the word. The word. Nah, and and the, uh, my lexicon is vast. So, <clears throat> from, so the, from, me, from those comic books that you from read. Those comic books that I read. <laughs> so for me not to know, I'm going to go back to my comic books and where the fuck purview at? Right? Nobody ever say that. Boom, bam, pow. <laughs> <laughs> Wham. <laughs> Somebody said to me that they they uh, they watched uh, an episode and they really enjoyed it, right? They really enjoyed it. And they were like, man, you know, um, if I could give you a little bit of advice or whatnot, you know, it'd be it'd be, be kind of cool if you talk. You guys talked about, you know, relationships and dating and, you know, should you fuck on the first night and this and other. And I said to them, I said, you know, there's plenty of other shows out there that, that talk about these <laughs> things and, and deal with that. And I, for one, as much as I love controversy and crazy things, I, I get tired of hearing all that. I get mm -hmm. tired of people talking about relationships and and dating and how you should do this and how you should do that. Should you have sex on the first night? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody actually said that to me. As, <laughs> if, as, if, as if that's absolute. Yeah, it was you know crazy. What I'm saying? I was like, like, yes, in all circumstances, <laughs> you should, yeah. or no, you but should I, never. I, I also, you, I, I'm gonna be real with you, man, I, and, and I, I watch a lot of podcasts. Man, there's shows out there that they're, they are based on that. They are based on topics like that and they have an insane, Following. And obviously there's something for everyone, right? There's something for everyone. Mm -hmm. But I, I just thought it was, you know, it's most important for us to talk about real life things and things that can help improve, you know, people's lives. Um, uh, help but that's shit. not to say that if you talk about relationships that that can't happen. It, it can, yeah, it can, but let's be real, let's be real, let's be real, let's be real. I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to be politically correct. Why, but let me why you always correct. say, I'm gonna be honest, let's be real, as if Because if you, man, you, you know, I gotta, that, I gotta, it, when I, you gotta know, if you know me, when I say let's be honest, that's just one layer of my honesty. Then if I say let's be real, I'm about to be 100% real with you. <laughs> <There's>, <laughs> I didn't know there was levels of yeah, honesty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if I say I fuck know. it, I'm just gonna say- I didn't know there was levels of Let's oh, give you an yeah, example. This is the O'Neal thing. Yeah. All right. Let's be honest. I'm gonna be honest. I'm keeping it real. 100 mm -hmm. <laughs> transparent. <Yeah. laughs> you like that's I'm gonna, you, I'm gonna give you an analogy. Right. I might if let's say somebody breast snake and I walk in, I'm like, man, it smells funny in here. That's just me being honest. You know what I'm saying? If I say I'm gonna keep it real, I'm gonna be like, man, shoot, I brush my teeth. You brush your teeth? You know what I'm saying? And if I'm 100 percent just gonna be real with you, I'm like, nigga, your breast stink. You know what I'm saying? There's levels to this. You know, there's levels. So now you, I thought you knew this. I thought, you know what I'm saying? You knew, you didn't know? I would be, we can't end the podcast like this <laughs> because <laughs> people would have listened for 50 minutes and this would have been the payoff. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, no, but I will say, no, that this, the thing about travel is, I want to say, is not as daunting and as difficult as most people may think it to be. Or I don't even say most people, because I think a lot of people are starting to do it more, but yeah. I just want to make it clear that if you just put a little time and attention towards finding opportunities to go places like off season, you know, you can get deals on on airfare and hotels. And and I would encourage people, you know, not to do the, you know, the, the all-inclusive Cancun type shit. It's like, go out and see some stuff that, yeah. Now you don't don't do America somewhere else. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, when well you go said. somewhere else, well do said. somewhere else. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know? Well mm -hmm. said. Are you done, Elzo? I, no, I'm just saying you paused. That's what I was asking. I was pausing for dramatic effect. Oh, my but bad. You, my bad. You, 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 you messed it up, bro. <laughs> Butterfly in the sky. No, don't be trying to bring the yeah, bar. Right, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I no. can no. fly no. twice as high. <laughs> no. Take but, a look. It's in a book. <laughs> Don't make me laugh. <laughs> I'm about to go right now. A reading rainbow. I. <laughs> this has been three black guys on yes. the couch. <laughs> yes. Like yeah. and subscribe. Yes. I'm O'Neal. I'm Renee. I'm Alzo Slade Jr. I'm O'Neal because it's <laughs> I'm Renee. <laughs> Andy Jared Gilbert Degans Wiley. On the couch. Is that your full name for That's real? That's my full name. Say it again. Renee Andy Jared Gilbert Degans Wiley. What the fuck? Degans? Mm hmm.